Alright guys, welcome back. Want to do something for a while here for the last uh, year or so. It was basically take the uh, accumulation of all my other Pantera parts and build truly a beginner's trainer heli. Um, if you watched my videos or followed my post all, obviously you know I don't like stock. Well, the idea behind this helicopter that sits in front of you was to be as close as stock as possible and kind of give you an honest assessment on performance, what you can expect, how little of dollars you can put into it. So what you see in front of you is about a $1,300 Pantera. And we'll go over all the details here in a second, but I uh, want to basically say that at this price point, for an entry-level helicopter, if you aren't out there doing 3D, if you don't know how to fly a helicopter, this is a great $1,300 way to get into it. It's a Nitro, it's a 600 millimeter class heli, um, decent components throughout as you'll see when we take the campy off, and very pleasing, very good to fly. Uh, if you're learning forward flight, hovering, your points of orientation, all the way into loops, stall turns, rolls, doing things of that nature, basically your basic aerobatics, this machine can do it. Not a problem. Probably the first thing I would upgrade beyond if you want to step past that is we would take out the $14 gyro and step up to maybe something like maybe a, a Spartan gyro or a Fataba GY520. But at this price entry point of where if I'm trying to hit this thing at about 1300 bucks, I think you'll be uh, pretty happy. So let's dig a little deeper. One of the first things I want to show you is what the all-up weight of this model is. So I've got a digital scale hanging here from the uh, rail here in the garage. It's already turned on, zeroed. We're going to load the helicopter onto it. Remind me why I unclipped the camera here. There you go. 7 pounds, 14 ounces is what I'm going to show you. And that is all up, ready to fly, less fuel. Alright, let's start the tail end of this. On the tail end of the helicopter, everything is stock, with the exception being the color of the fins. I've shot it with... Uh, a fluorescent orange and an automotive clear. Same thing here. As we come up the boom, one thing you'll notice as I pan back here, the can't be out of the way so you can see it. If you notice your focus towards the push rod, you'll see there's only three of the four push rod stays that are supplied with the kit. I find that three is enough. A slight modification, but not really, on the push rods. There's normally a nut and bolt that goes through here. Uh, this is an older kit, so yours is a little different. This piece is kind of narrow on uh, the parts I've got laying around. Yours is probably going to be a little wider, especially if you've been buying in 2010 uh, or late 2009. So I just put a carbon fiber rod through there and epoxy it in place and use it as a pin. So I didn't use the, the nut and bolt. So it doesn't look as Frankensteinish. It's a lot cleaner. Uh, saves a little bit of weight. As we know, the helicopter is a little tail heavy, but that helps against that. Coming up front, frame, tail servo in the stock location. Gyro is not in stock location. Gyro is one of the easiest things you can move forward. And with your servo wire, as long as it is, it makes a real nice spot to put it up front. Kind of helps. So you can uh, drill and tap, put your gyro platform up front, mount your gyro here. You'll notice on this kit, it has the snorkel and air filter. It also has the extra uh, output stabilizer shafts on it. I think they're pretty much a must. Even if you're doing trainer stuff, it does help the helicopter be a little more precise. Other thing you'll notice too, most servo arms are not 20 millimeter. Uh, so I do order in Futaba metal servo arms. I run nothing but Futaba equipment on my avionics. So I buy their 20 millimeter metal servo arm and I use those throughout. Uh, there is a slight difference when you go from like the Dubro, they're 19.5 millimeter, 
heavy duty plastic. They work well. These are a little bit of bling, but you know, if you're gonna buy one set, these things are seven bucks a piece, twenty-one bucks for the entire kit. So might as well go ahead and do it. Other points to notice. Hobby King 401B $14 gyro. Cost, I have no idea what freight is because it's got bundled in with a bunch of other stuff. But uh, 14 bucks. Once you do the foam modifications and pack it with some foam to secure the circuit board inside, it flies pretty much like a Fataba 401 gyro. So I'm pretty happy with it. Coming up further front, avionics is very simple. There's a eight channel fast receiver in this case. We only need six channels. So if you're being on a budget, a six channel will do. And a 4200 nickel metal hydride battery going through a heavy duty switch. In the case of this heavy duty switch, it's not in the stock location where I've cut out and run all my wires through. It's down here low in the front right servo, which would be your mixture control. If you're doing your initial stuff, you don't need mixture control. Don't bother with it. Put your switch down here. Makes it nice and easy to turn the helicopter on and off. Other points of notice, no hopper tank. This helicopter flies for nine minutes plus easy with a stock tank. If you learn to hover, you don't need it. Even if you're doing 3D, you don't need it. Just set your timer for eight minutes if you're doing 3D stuff and stop doing 3D at eight and then uh, keep one G on that tank. Bullet in this case, down inside here is a tired OS 50 Hyper. We spin around the other side. <coughs> we do see a pro muffler. We'll come back to that in a second. We're using a Fataba 3151 inexpensive digital servo, about a $30 servo. Let's go up to the Cyclix. So Cyclix, we're using metal servo arms. We're using the $30 kit for the uh, additional output stabilizers. I'm running Fataba 9252s because I've had them. These were in my first Panteras back in 2007. They've been sitting around. I figure I might as well employ them again. Um, Good servos on your cyclic, pretty much like wearing good tennis shoes, man, or underwear that fits. Buy the right thing the first time. Uh, just talked with John Beach this afternoon. This is May 8th, 2010. He is looking to offer us some inexpensive servos from Korea for about 50 bucks a pop that are similar spec class as a 9252. So if you even want to go further on the cheap, that'd be a way to go. What I'm going to post with this video is going to be what I've got in this helicopter and Tower, Hobby, Tower Hobby's pricing. And that's where I kind of arrive at the $1,300 mark. So, but you can uh, modify it from there. As I mentioned, Audacity Pro Muffler. The rotor head itself, I have done nothing to it with the exception of being anal retentive on the build. And that is make sure all of my links are the exact same length. Uh, I went ahead and CA'd the bearings into the grips. Uh, one thing I did change because this is uh, basically a beater helicopter for me, but also for 3D train or excuse me for a buddy box training, is I went ahead and put the harder dampers in the uh, yoke. Um, if you are just starting out, the stock dampers are fine. If you're a little more of an expert flyer or intent on tossing this thing around, go ahead and buy the harder dampers. It's one of the best performance upgrades on the cheap you can make to the helicopter. We'll cut away and come back.